thing. Now would be a great time to silence all of your electronic devices. The agenda for the school board meeting is published and available at least one week prior to the school board meeting. Also one week prior to the meeting, members of the public have the opportunity to correspond with board members with those communications becoming part of the official record. Any member of the public who wishes to speak on an agenda item will have an opportunity to do so prior to final action being taken. Please fill out a speaker request card available in the lobby. During the public comment portion of the meeting, names will be called in the order they are received. Any member of the public wishing to spend, speak on a non-agenda item on a matter relevant to school uh, district will have an opportunity to speak at the end of the meeting. Please fill out a speaking request card available in the lobby and names will be called in the order they are received. We welcome members of the public to attend our meeting and we request the public's, we respect the public's right to speak to the board. We will not tolerate behavior that disrupts the orderly conduct of this meeting, including yelling or speaking over others. Our civility policy is in effect. Our vision statement, all our students achieve success in college, career, and life. Thought for the day is by myself. Um, This is a quote by Nicholas A. Ferroni, and I thought it's very appropriate for, for this meeting since it's the first one we're back in school. Educators are the only people who lose sleep over other people's kids. Okay, if you stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I'd like to say that all school board members are present and I would ask for a moment of silence for the family of Zatania Lewis, student at James M. Marlowe Elementary School. Thank you. I, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of August 2nd and workshop of August 2nd. Move to approve. Second. First come, Crumley, second, Bodwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Right. That um, brings me to the question, are there any off agenda items uh, no, this evening? All right, thank you. <laughs> and then that brings us to public comment on agenda items only. And we do have one card. Uh, it's um, Fei Fei Ho, and it's on 10.3 Unisig. Before we get started, this is the opportunity for the public to be heard on items appearing for action on the meeting agenda. Copies of the agenda are available at the entrance to the boardroom. To speak at this time, you must have submitted a green speaking request card located on the tables at the entrance to the boardroom. The form must indicate the specific item or items you wish to address. Speakers wishing to address general matters not on the agenda should complete the pink speaking request card and will have an opportunity to speak later in the meeting. Speakers who wish to speak on both types of topics will have their available time allocated among topics and will have to save time, save non-agenda comments for the appropriate segment of the agenda. If you have any materials you wish to share with the board, please provide them to the board secretary prior to speaking. Each speaker has up to a total of three minutes to address the board. If you see the yellow light on the podium, please wrap your comments up to leave time for other speakers. S speakers will be called to come forward by the chair. Prior to making your remarks, please state your name and address for the record. All speakers and comments are subject to applicable school board bylaws and policies, including those requiring appropriate decorum and civility. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No person may address or question board members individually. 
Staff members shall not be expected to answer questions from the audience unless called upon by the board chair or the superintendent. All right, thank you, go ahead. Hey, good evening, my name is still Fly Fly Home, uh, public address 2223, West Shore Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33607. I make comment on some of the things that are kind of tied to my school, of course, 10.3, uh, which is the UNICEF grant. I just wish that every school in our district had that opportunity to get the money for all the important resources. And unfortunately, uh, last week, uh, Mr. Barker got to see uh, over at Ritchie, kind of see some of the positivity. It's unfortunate that, you know, it took us, you know, to get to a very, very low point to get extra money to get the resources and the people that we need. I know, you know, just about, about a month ago, uh, Mr. Solchek actually wrote a pretty good article. He didn't pay me for this, but he wrote a very, very good article on how some of our schools are funded. That's in relation to uh, something called the required local effort. And I just wish that we're able to collect enough money so that every single school, not just struggling schools, do get that uh, opportunity, that money. Kind of ties into also uh, 10.6. Uh, that's going to be uh, on the turnaround schools. And again, unfortunately, we've got to be the lowest of the low in order to get the resources, to get the people that we need. So hopefully, you know, we let the state legislature know that we do need to correct funding. And then instead of getting into some very, very low point, because we kind of feel, I know the teachers feel it, our parents feel it, also our students. It takes a very, very long time to turn around school. You know, Mr. Barker can also attest to this. It takes a very, very long time, even at Ritchie, uh, even having a brand new uh, administration. It takes us quite some time to get us into a much better spot. The Gallup numbers are definitely a true you know, testament to that. And again, hopefully, you know, we do get the right resources to support that. If I look at number 11.1, uh, I'm sure you guys would be surprised to see how many people have been resigning or even retiring. So hopefully, you know, with a step in the right direction, not just money from our state, money from, uh, you know, Lift Up Pasco in conjunction with working together with our union, we can get uh, the money that where we need to be. And definitely, you know, make sure our legislators keep them informed. It's a very, very great opportunity that I get to travel to them every year. So thank you to our uh, school district. Thank you to USCP for allowing me to go up there. We can only do so much in our district. I know there's almost 10,000 employees here, about 60,000 students. So my opportunity last year, Got to speak to you about 120 uh, representatives, 40 senators, and I feel very proud to you know make my students kind of heard up there without bringing my kids up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. right. Superintendent. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm skipping over a page. Uh, United School Board employees of Pasco. Sorry about that, Don. Good evening. Please excuse my informal attire tonight. I can't get my arm up to tie a tie. I didn't wear it. I didn't want to wear a clip-on because I didn't want you to confuse me with Mr. Gad. So. <laughs> <laughs> Superintendent Browning, Attorney Alfonso, Chair Armstrong, Honorable Board Members and District Staff, good evening. I hope you're all well. Negotiation teams are slated to meet for both instructional and SRP tomorrow. We are very hopeful that we can agree to an economic package that will put recurring dollars in every employee's pocket very soon. There are other considerations being discussed at the table, but right now, the salary conver conversation is foremost. While the district and the union have differing opinions on the mandated grading practices, the rest of this year's rollout seems to have gone rather smoothly. Perhaps normal has returned. Let's hope so. As all of you now know, the referendum on the primary ballot has passed. This is probably the biggest thing to happen to Pasco County public education in the last 20 years. I'm extremely pleased, as it was I who some five years ago initiated the conversation of having a secondary source of income for salary improve improvements. I want to thank the board members and the superintendent for getting this on the ballot. I want to thank the public for supporting this. And I personally want to thank Mike Fasano and John Legg for lending their written support as well. Lift Up Pasco, some of your former educators, are also to be commended for all their hard work in communication with the public and helping to educate voters on this cause. FEA and Stephanie Kunkel, are also to be applauded as they work to get information out to voters through mailers. 
There are also others, many staff in this room and watching this meeting, who also had roles in making this ballot initiative a reality. I don't want to start naming names for fear of leaving people off a list, but you know who you are, and I want to thank all of you for your hard work. Congratulations to Megan Harding and Cynthia Armstrong on your re-election to the board. USEP is, working, is looking to uh, work with you and all board members in an effort to provide for the best for both students and employees here in Pasco. One goal that I will remain vigilant about is improving employee perception of management and easing the burden on teachers. It's imperative that we allow our instructional personnel to fully concentrate on classroom instruction. We will continue to seek remedies to eliminate unnecessary processes which detract from educating our students. Later in this meeting, you're being asked to name the softball field at Zephyr Hills High School in honor of Craig Milborn. As an athletic director myself back in 1984 and following, I had the honor of working with Craig. His hard work and concern for his athletes, his school, and the district were at the forefront of all he set out to do. I can think of no finer honor than to name this field for him. We are looking forward to a good year. Thank you in advance for working with us towards that end. Thank you. Right. <coughs> School board member committee reports. You want me uh, to go first? Yes, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the uh, Construction Management Selection Committee went through uh, about 800 pages of material submitted by 10 different firms and narrowed those down to five. And then a couple weeks ago, we spent all day and uh, interviewed those five and made a selection. So that will be coming to you um, in a uh, board package soon. And uh, we'll get us moving on our uh, next uh, classroom edition at Starkey K-8. That's it, Madam Chair. Very good. <clears throat> Mrs. Crumley? Uh, we had a community engagement task force committee meeting, and I'm going to defer my comments to Mrs. Hilton because she has other things to add and rather than being redundant. And then also next uh, month, <coughs> I believe, our next meeting, we're having a, um, an update to the board anyways. But I'm going to defer to Mrs. Hilton. Um, I have an EHOC of the um, Health and Wellness Committee next week. So okay. Mrs. Bodwin? I had no committees meet. I had none. All right, uh, I had two. Uh, the Pasco Education uh, Foundation meeting, uh, the WISE uh, Supply, uh, Teachers Supply Drive uh, went very well. I, th I know McDonald's, I saw them pull in with a bunch of stuff that they'd collected. And Publix uh, is coming up in a big way. Instead of just giving the $10 gift cards, they're giving uh, a lump sum of money that they can use to buy the different supplies that are needed. Uh, it's a huge sum of money, so that was very good. And so they uh, had some new board members, five new board members joined, so that was very good. Um, and they're already looking at their fundraisers they're going to be having. I saw the uh, email about Swing for the Kids. The, their golf tournament is coming up. So uh, uh, lots of good things and wonderful people that are supporting our teachers through that foundation. Uh, the other meeting was the Investment Oversight Committee. Uh, as you, if you followed the news, you know, um, the financial part of it wasn't that great a news other than uh, when we had the meeting, things were turning around a bit, but we just have to see uh, how that's going to go. But they're doing very good at strat strategizing where the best place to put our investments are. So we are, you know, still doing, doing fine with that. Um, and I think we are going to be, for the board members, they're going to be reviewing the bylaws. Uh, they drug out the old bylaws from when that was created, and we don't exactly do things like that any the way that it was originally set up. So they're going to look at, see if something needs to be tweaked, and that would come back to the, the school board members. Uh, so that is it. Superintendent Browning. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Members, um, I wanted to give you an update. Um, regarding transportation, um, where we are in the district. And as you know, the last few years have been pretty tough for the Pasco district. 
Uh, COVID uh, has certainly made this situation even more challenging uh, over the last two and a half years or so. Uh, we experienced a significant number of driver vacancies um, in this district, as have all districts across Florida. Uh, because of this, uh, we were not getting our, stu our students to school on time. Uh, because of where we found ourselves, uh, a couple of initiatives were put into place. The first one was uh, adding the fourth bell tier, the second semester of the 21-22 school year. Um, while I will readily admit that this was an extreme step, uh, it did have the hope of getting our students to school on time. Uh, as we look back, uh, while it did help, we believe that it could have meant a lot worse. Um, with that said, it did not result in the students, uh, in all students, arriving to school on time and getting and arriving home on time. The second initiative we put in place was the elimination of courtesy ridership for secondary schools uh, for this school year, the 22-23 school year. Last spring, we announced that we would eliminate courtesy ridership for secondary students. Um, this, too, was an extreme step uh, to take, but one that was necessary. Uh, one middle high school was actually reported to have had 16 buses, 16 buses of courtesy riders. That's 16 drivers that I could have assigned to routes to ensure our students were getting to school on time. Uh, I know I've received emails from parents requesting that empty seats on buses be filled by courtesy riders. Uh, I want the board members to know that buses are more full now than ever before. We've eliminated almost 100 routes from the beginning of last year despite the growth that this district's seen. To continue, uh, we continue to combine routes this school year to adjust to the numbers of students that we're required to transport and we do not have enough drivers to get this work done uh, today. At the beginning of the 2021 uh, school year, we had 436 bus routes. Today, we have 333 bus routes. We have grown by approximately 6,000 students in that time. The elimination of courtesy riders for secondary school will remain in effect. We cannot and will not begin making exceptions to this practice because of the inequities that will be caused across our district. While these measures are in place, uh, we are still experiencing late buses. This is due in large part to the 57 driver vacancies uh, that we currently are dealing with. Just last week and even this week, uh, we had a higher than normal number of call outs, making it even more difficult to get our students to school on time. So why do I say all this? I want the board to know that we are doing everything we can to get the students uh, to school on time that we're required to transport uh, to school. Our transportation staff, and I think it goes without saying, that our transportation staff is working many, many hours addressing the issues of parents and students. Uh, we continue to do this to minimize the impacts these decisions are having on families. We'll also continue to be uh, efficient as possible with the resources uh, we currently have. We have seven drivers uh, and six assistants in classes this week that will be ready for positions uh, after they finish training uh, this week. I'll certainly keep the board uh, updated as we uh, move down this path of transportation. Uh, quite honestly, we were hoping that uh, the, uh, the four bell tier system was going to be last year and maybe this year, but if things don't change, I would anticipate we'd remain with four bell tiers uh, moving into next year as well. Um, I also want the board to know, uh, moving on to a different subject, uh, that uh, we had appealed some school grades. Uh, we had grades that were assigned an I, which is an incomplete, based on the percentage of students that tested. Just this afternoon late, uh, I received a letter from Commissioner Diaz. Um, Pasco High School, Chasco Middle School, Gulf High School, and Hudson High School uh, all received C grades. Um, so we did get grades assigned to that, to that school. The only school, uh, the traditional K-12 school uh, that did not get a great assignment was Anclote High School. Anclote High School will remain an I because of the percentage of students that tested. Um, so as, as far as last year's testing, that looks closed on that, and uh, we will work hard at making sure that we get at least 95% of our students tested uh, in, uh, over, the coming, over the coming year. Um, let me also just uh, take a, a moment uh, to thank uh, our voters and our taxpayers. Uh, last Tuesday was a great day for the Pasco District. It is a game changer, as I've been quoted uh, numerous times. Um, I believe uh, that um, 
with the return of our two board members from last Tuesday, uh, as well as uh, the approval of the uh, millage referendum, I believe it sent a very strong message. It strong, sent a strong message uh, that our parents uh, are happy with the direction uh, that this district is moving. I think they are. Uh, they want to support our teachers, and I think more, most importantly, they want to support our students. Uh, this uh, is a uh, was a, a huge thing for us because what it's going to do is it's going to put us um, at even if not above our neighbors to the south uh, when it comes to pay. A matter of fact, Mrs. Gant just shared with us today, just anecdotally, uh, that. Just this week, we have seen an increase in the number of uh, applicants uh, wanting to come into the PASCO system uh, from other districts, uh, more so than we've had. So we know it was, it was a marked uh, difference. Uh, so I think it's just the beginning of things to, to come, and uh, we need to be accountable. Uh, we need to be transparent, uh, and we need to do what we said we're going to do with those dollars, uh, and we will do just that. So. As I share with you in an email that uh, we will be putting a plan together um, and uh, getting that to the board and starting to have discussions on that, look what that looks like. We still have a year out uh, before those dollars will be collected. I do want to, uh, in addition to thanking our voters and our taxpayers, I do want to thank USCP uh, for their support and uh, all the, the staff uh, that worked on their own time um, and this board uh, for having the courage uh, to place that issue on the ballot. So. With that, Madam Chairman, uh, that completes anything for me. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Gadd. Uh, nothing major. I um, want to make sure that you all have in your calendar the dedication of Kirkland Ranch Academy. I think you all uh, approved the date, and I hope you can all make it. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback about that school. Uh, it's beautiful. Kids love it. Um, I think um, I haven't had a chance to read it, but the superintendent pointed out to me there's an article in Florida Trend about it. If you get a chance to grab the Florida Trend and take a look at it, um, but um, couldn't be more proud of that school and the way it's turned out. So hopefully we'll get some really good positive learning experiences going there, um, and it'll be a place of learning for years to come. Uh, Ms. Armstrong mentioned in October we have a fundraiser for. Uh, the foundation, which is the golf tournament, but I also want you to get on your calendar my favorite, which is the Aim for Education fundraiser, which is November 18th. Um, so um, please come out for that if you can. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That Kirkland dedication date, you don't have that on? Oh, yeah. The 21st. September 21st, Thank 6 o'clock in the evening, p.m. All right. I knew several dates went around. I wasn't sure. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Shibley. Good evening, board members. I just wanted to echo uh, Mr. Peace's sentiment um, that we are very close with bargaining and uh, are anticipating a settlement very quickly. Uh, it is my hope that we can actually bring the details of that economic settlement to the board uh, at their next meeting on the 12th of September uh, so that we can begin the process uh, of processing salary increases for our employees. Um, there is also an addendum to item 11.1 uh, that has been uploaded into board docs. Um, I will say for those uh, of you that have reviewed the entire addendum, there is a positive trend in that addendum uh, in that the number of appointments far exceeds uh, any other personnel action that is occurring in there. Um, so it does kind of echo some of what we're seeing that some of these vacancies are beginning to be filled. So that is positive, uh, positive news. All right, uh, Mrs. Kuhn. Good evening. A few things this evening. One, I wanted to thank all of the district staff um, for help with the transportation call center. We did open earlier this year. We opened on Friday. That was the secondary orientation day. And the calls were really interesting this year. We um, started out with 665 calls all the way up to 7,000 on the first day of school and then trickling back down on Friday the 12th to 751. So we had a lot of people helping us. I mean, we really had people coming back two and three days um, just because of some staffing issues here at the district. We had directors coming to help answer the phone. It was um, truly a team effort and appreciate everyone's assistance with that. Also, I shared with you um, some information about 21st century grants that our after school enrichment program got. I have some additional updates for you. I'll just um, re refresh the schools. We have Centennial Elementary, James Marlowe Elementary, Gulf Highlands Elementary, Moon Lake Elementary, 
Quail Hollow Elementary, Cox Elementary, Centennial Middle, and Stewart Middle. Those are all schools that will be getting a 21st century program, so that's, um, that's enrichment programs that will be taking place at those schools. And um, the process for that, there's a grant review with DOE that's in early September, so we're anticipating once it goes through all the steps with DOE, um, some kind of an opening in, the, in late fall is what we're aiming for. Um, both um, Cox and Quail Hollow are programs that we have had, so we'll be able to reopen those, and we um, were able to get all of our applications. So it's great news for the schools and for after-school research programs. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, Dr. Moore. Good evening, board members. It's hard to believe, but we are about to start the month of September. But we had a lot of great activities taking place in the month of August. So let me give you just a bit of highlights. On August the 4th, our CTAE team hosted a very successful day of professional development for close to 200 teachers as they began to chart their course. That's our theme this year, chart your course for themselves and their students. We want to give a big thank you to the Pasco County Sheriff's Office and the Bay Area Manufacturers Association for sponsoring this exciting event. Zephyr Hills High School agricultural teacher Leanne John has been accepted into the class of 18 of the AgriScience Education Leadership Program for 20, 2022 and 2023. This is a great opportunity to tour agricultural operations, meet with industry representatives, and gain a better understanding of Florida's natural resources, diverse agricultural landscape, and environmental protections. Ms. John will join other agricultural ed educators throughout Florida for the four exploration and learning events in the Panhandle, South Florida, Central Florida, and Tallahassee. And the cohort will graduate during the 2023 Florida FFA State Convention. So Ms. John uh, will engage in leadership development with her uh, fellow leaders, and she'll bring all of that wonderful, great information that she's going to be learning uh, to enhance PASCO's agricultural program. So we want to extend her congratulations. We've also been working to support our new and veterans teachers. Uh, we spent uh, the month of August out assisting uh, schools as well as administrative teams to help them make sure that they are ready to, uh, to support our students. We've also enrolled our first integrated education and training students in the HVAC program at Marchman Technical College. Now what makes this so special is these students will be able to complete this program as adult students while earning their GED and their HVAC certification at the same time for free. No cost to the student because of a grant that, uh, and as well as our patient care. So we love programs that are going to, you know, better our community and not cost any money for those students. We also want to say a very special thank you to Senior Supervisor Thomas Brochu because we had a wonderful adult education graduation ceremony uh, on August the 25th. 93 graduates crossed the stage at River Ridge High School. 26 of those students were from nine high schools, 60 were GED students, 43 from Pasco Adult Education at, at Marchman Technical College, and 17 from Pasco Adult Education at Wesley Chapel. Seven adult high school graduates, and we're always excited. Those are wonderful events. And last but not least, the Pharmacy Technician Program at KTech has been certified as a PTCB recognized education training program. Now this means that the students will be eligible to take the PTCB exam, which is a national certification exam for pharmacy technicians. So they'll be able to walk out and walk right into a job because they have been prepared for that opportunity. And as always, we are preparing today for tomorrow's workforce. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Hilton. Hello, good evening. Um, I'm happy to share an update with you about community engagement. And I hope you had a chance to see the email from Mr. Haggerty regarding a new family notification um, about students' academic progress. So starting tomorrow, we'll send school messenger email and text to families of secondary students when any grade drops below a C. That'll be weekly. And you may remember that one of the findings from our community engagement assessment indicated that our families did want more academic information about their students, so this is in direct response to that. Additionally, we'll start to communicate about the My Student app 
that you can download mm -hmm. um, and utilize to leverage really easy functionality for this really important platform. And so families can log into the app, they can check grades, attendance, they can complete forms, and they can communicate with teachers. And there's some great functionality for teachers as well. Um, and I'll give you just a preview of what you're going to hear about community engagement in our district update at our next meeting. We'll do, be doing um, a little bit of um, more show and tell. Um, we'll have a demo of a parent landing page with all the info in one place. Um, we can't quite do a MyPasco Connect for families, but we can pull everything together. Um, we've started a community engagement professional learning and theater patterns with our principals. We're partnering with the PTA Advocates to host a community engagement um, event later this fall. We'll be launching a new district newsletter for staff, families, and our community. We'll launch a community engagement page on our website and an easy way for families and businesses to engage with us. As and remember, you might have uh, remember another finding was about community um, members, businesses wanting to engage with us and just not knowing how. So we've been directly responding to that finding. And lastly, we hosted the first session of our Citizens Academy redesigned, really um, communicate, I don't know, oh, I was going to point out Mr. Haggerty, um, communications, Ms. Tara um, Nixon, um, and some, uh, in the first session of our redesigned um, Citizens Academy. You're going to meet those Academy members next month. Um, this month was really about an overview, and they also um, got to know our success plan with Peggy and Suzanne from the Accountability Research and Measurement team. And that is it for me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Barker. Hello. It was a great start to the year, and tonight I just want to take a couple seconds to highlight two schools. Uh, just today, Gulfside Elementary School, a community partnership school, provided more than 40 boxes of food to members of their local community in need. And I also wanted to mention second graders at Pineview Elementary School, as part of their IB program work, are involved in a service project to help the Suncoast Animal League. And the kids are really excited about that opportunity to learn how to make a difference in their community. Thank you. Mrs. Gant? Well, I said Mrs. Gant. Oh, 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 you don't have anything. I'm sorry. All right, uh, Mrs. Pope, go ahead. Yes, so I am excited to um, bring to you a new assistant principal. She was board approved this summer. But if Ms. Kimberly Wardell could please stand and be recognized. Um, it's not often that I can... Um, thank you. You can stay standing. It's not often that I can share someone's... Um, history in this way, but she happened to be a five-year-old in my kindergarten class at Chester Taylor Elementary back in 1997. So yes, I said kindergarten. And so she was hiding behind her mom at registration day, and I had to say, my name's Kimberly too. And she looked around her mom, and the rest is history. So here she is, and she happened to be able to work at Woodland Elementary first as a BCE student when she was a student, a junior and a senior at Pearls High School. And then she moved on um, to be a secretary, and then a kindergarten teacher, a third grade teacher for a year, and went right back to kindergarten. <laughs> and now we're super excited to have her um, as the new AP at Watergrass Elementary School. So we are um, happy to have here supporting her, Principal Andrea Altman, um, husband Joe Wardell, who is a deputy with the Pasco Sheriff's Office. And I do have to tell you, she was offered the position while she was at her wedding rehearsal, literally at the venue. <laughs> And so in her wedding, which I happened to be um, happy to be in attendance at, in her, um, when she was speaking to her husband at the altar, she brought up her new job and how now he is not only like the husband of a teacher with 18 to 20 kids, but now he has about, what is it, 840? 864, they know the number. So yes, he got a, a lot of kids um, right away that day. So it was super sweet to hear that brought into their um, nuptials. And then she is definitely the proud daughter of Sue and Doug Smith. If you guys would both stand. 
Sue is a retired food and nutrition um, cafeteria manager. I know she worked at Pasco and Zephyr Hills High. And then Doug is a mechanic at our southeast garage in Zephyr Hills. So we are definitely excited to welcome that whole family. Um, and welcome Kimberly to leadership. I always said that um, she could run the classroom at age five, so I'm not shocked that here she is in leadership. So congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. So, um, Mrs. Who wants to go next? I'll just say that. All right. Uh, Dr. Al. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't compete with that. Um, yeah. Uh, what I am going to ask is for Dr. Christina Stanley to please come up to the podium. She's going to address 16.1 in your board agenda packet. Hi, everybody. Hello, Chairwoman Armstrong, Vice Chair Harding school board members, Superintendent Browning, and district leadership. Thank you for considering this request to name the softball field at Zephyr Hills High School after Craig Milburn. Craig was a teacher at Zephyr Hills High School for 33 years and athletic director for 28. He coached baseball, basketball, softball, weightlifting, and football. He won district championships in all the sports he coached over the years. Many of his former players went on to play college ball and professional ball. He was devoted to our school and our community. He was a great coach and mentor for our students and community. He developed a program called Project Graduation, which had an immediate positive impact in our community to keep our kids safe and off the roads during graduation night. In recognition of his dedication and commitment to the students, staff, and sports program at Zephyr Hills High School and the community of Zephyr Hills, we request that the softball field at Zephyr Hills High be named after Coach Craig Milburn. On behalf of the Zephyr Hills community and Coach Bruce Cimarelli, thank you for your consideration of this request. Thank you. I would also um, like to share a couple things about Anclote High School as well. We had a student there, Raphael Current, that was recognized with the Legion of Valor Bronze Cross for Outstanding Achievement. It's with the JROTC program. And just so you can understand um, how stringent and what an honor it is to receive it, there were only 14 selected out of 300,000 applicants. Wow. And so um, we have Sergeant Major Placeris and Major Parrish um, that oversee that program. And also at the same time, they recognize the student. They also recognize Miss Kelly Baker, who is the principal secretary and just does, does so much for that school. She's a wonderful human being. And on top of that, we had wonderful news at Anclote High School. Um, principal Moon uh, returned to campus on uh, Wednesday, and she is cancer free. And yes. And so her faculty and staff all wore pink that day, and they are delighted to have her return. So just wanted to share that. All right, thank you. All right, Mrs. Hetzler Nettles, do you have anything tonight? Not this evening. Thank all right, you. thank you. All right, uh, there's no expulsion recommendations. That brings us to the consent uh, agenda, and I would entertain a motion to... Uh, First, are there any items to be pulled? Okay. Yeah, I want to pull 12.6, but talk about Gallup on there. 12.6, okay. Any other ones to be pulled? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'll move the approval of the consent agenda with the addendum 11.1 and the exception of 12.6. Second. All right. Uh, first, Altman. Second, Bodwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. That brings up 12.6, uh, and I'll turn it over to um, Mrs. Harding. So I just want to have a conversation about this because I'm still not 100% convinced that this is something that we need to be spending money on. I do believe that Gallup does serve an important purpose, but could we form something of our own? I believe it's important that we have a pulse on what our teachers and staff are feeling in regard to engagement and morale. Um, I've spoken to a lot of teachers, to principal staff, and um, and uh, different teachers and staff, and they don't feel that this is very beneficial to the morale and culture of their schools because there's like in, in, con, like inconsistency. So some schools might really focus on like the data, but other schools might not. Um, and so um, 
like so other schools might do it for compliance and I understand the intent of it I really do but even when I was in the classroom it was just another thing for me to do and there was never ever follow-up from it um, what about utilizing our polling tool that we use to ask questions or have to ha have town hall meetings having raw conversations with our staff and teachers shouldn't we poll our teachers and staff more than just one time of year um, I know we have thought exchange quadralics etc that I think that we can be utilizing. And I don't know if this is a conversation my peers want to talk about or if I'm the only one, but I just really feel like we could use that money on something else. Um, and it kind of goes back to like community engagement and how I felt before. So I'm just, I'm just wondering if anybody has any other thoughts on it. Well, I'm, I don't think we have thought exchange anymore, do we? We, we do want to, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. We, we do, but it, we've, we've reduced the, the funding for that and we use it in, uh, bigger issues. We don't do it as broadly as we have but before. But we have qualtrics. Qualtrics, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I apologize, I said it wrong. And I know that probably has, um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I would, Madam Chairman, if I could. Uh, we, uh, Mrs. Hilton had sent an email to all the board members uh, detailing uh, this particular um, agenda item. And I'd like for Mrs. Hilton uh, to go over again uh, how embedded uh, Gallup is. And, and keep in mind that um, that teachers spend probably five minutes the entire year answering uh, the, the teacher survey. Um, so it's not onerous on teachers. But some, um, so what I, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have Mrs. Hilton uh, detail again how, in, how we use, how schools use, how principals use, uh, and our district leaders use uh, the Gallup. So the full item, um, out of the full item, only a, about $125,000 uh, $125, um, is for the surveys and the scorecards. That's staff and students. Um, the student poll, I believe, is about $25,000. Um, the remainder uh, is for strengths um, codes, which is a whole nother, it just happens to be the same vendor. Um, and strengths coaching. The strengths coaching um, is not paid for with um, GR. It is paid for with grants. Many of the schools use strengths codes with their leadership team. Um, new schools use them at retreats. Um, and so that's a mixed funding um, source, uh, school-based funds, um, some uh, department funds um, in various, um, it, it just lots of different um, ways that we utilize that. Uh, people also buy text, professional texts for adults um, through this contract as well. Um, in terms of the survey, um, we have um, right now, it's not required to be part of their school improvement plan. We have about 70% of schools who consistently have a focus on engagement and this data in their school improvement plan. It's also embedded in our success plan. Um, and in our key priorities. Additionally, um, it, the strengths coaching, which is different from the survey and the scorecard, is a foundational component of our leadership development program. Um, and so it from uh, teachers who participate, teachers and other leaders who participate in our lead work, to Advancing Leader Academy, to Preparing New Principal um, Program. We have strengths work embedded in all of um, the, everywhere uh, along the way in the leadership development um, program. Many of um, the retreats that we do to when we start up a school, when we have a change in leadership, when we are implementing a new program, bringing on a new initiative, and we pull um, folks together for mission and vision work um, to do that uh, uh, startup of a school or an initiative, we rely on strengths work also as the foundation um, to those engagements with our staff and our leaders. Okay. Can I ask? Yeah, uh, I was going to say, so what are we, because you said about 70% of the schools utilized for improvement plans, so are we going to make that mandatory for the rest of the percentage? Because like I, like the only, and the only reason why I bring this up is because, like I said, like my experience and experiences that others people have had is, is that it's been given and then there's no follow through with it. So teachers are like, well, what, what was the point of doing that? Um, 
and I, I appreciate your email, I appreciate all your conversation, so I'm just wondering what is going to be the follow-up and ensuring that this data is being utilized at all the schools and that the teachers see meaning in that, and that which in turn is going to trickle over to student success, obviously. As I mentioned to you, we, um, we did not press hard here in mm -hmm. the, during the pandemic. Um, prior to the pandemic, we had many more conversations um, as part of principal meetings, as part of small group principal meetings, you know, large group principal meetings. Um, and I, the 70% is right now. I did not go back. I apologize. Right. I did not go back to pre-pandemic to count up how many um, uh, schools were using Gallup data then or how many used it as part or just uh, focused on engagement. Um, in their schools and so when we the one thing I think to note is when we're using that data we don't often say I'm res we're responding to the Gallup data instead you might hear I want to make sure you feel like your voice is heard at work that's one of the questions I want to make sure you understand the expectations at, at this workplace um, and so that might be conversations that are had or what is worked on in a school setting or in a department setting. Um, and so it might not draw the connection like, oh, we're, we're working on this Gallup data because that's not, it's kind of not supposed to be that way. So the 30% that aren't, that it's not in their success plan or improvement plan is it because that school chose not to focus on engagement? Is that what that or is? Or they just might not have put it in their success plan. I think all of our schools focus on engagement. It's one okay. of our key priorities. Yeah. In that's what I thought, culture. so that's why I was wondering. Yeah. So then it, what are they doing to, instead of using Gallup? Just because it might not be in their success plan, many school leaders will put just the like top one or two things, because it is supposed to be a focused plan. But along the way, all of our school leaders know that culture is critical right. um, to making a school run well. I don't 100%. know if my peers, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, I don't know if my peers have anything to add to that. Um, um, after yes. they're done, Madam or you don't Chair, I'd like when they're done. Scrumbly, uh, no, please. Okay. So our um, our principals do use the Gallup data, just like Mrs. Hilton said. Um, particularly when they're in leadership meetings or instructional staff meetings, um, gathering opinion, feedback, and every one of those uh, principals does have discussion with their supervising um, assistant superintendent on the engagement of their staff at their school, ways that they can support their staff um, because engaged staff stay at the school. Um, and right. engage staff, engage children. And so we do know how important that is, and it is just a brief survey in time. Um, but I do think um, all of the principals know how critical that is and how they should be working with their, their staff, and we certainly will continue to bring that forward. Okay. So I, you have a question? I yes, I'd just ahead. like to add, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I, I do appreciate that you brought this up. I think it's important that we have a con conversation about it as it demonstrates to the public that we are concerned about mm -hmm. spending. So um, I had a lengthy conversation with uh, Dr. Jones, Peggy Jones, on this topic. And one of the, th the things that I mentioned that I do like about <coughs> having a third party survey, survey is that it is third party because I said I had kind of thought of the same thing. Why aren't we doing this with all of our technology and things that we have now through our, our vast computer systems? Um, but I think it me it's meaningful to our teachers and staff that it comes from a third party. There's the confidentiality that comes out of it for them. Um, uh, things, I mean, this is their expertise. There's things that come up through Gallup that we probably don't even think of and that we can share on a national basis with them. And I asked, do they ever provide solutions when a, an area is identified that we need help in, so to speak? And they and I was told by Dr. Jones that yes, they do. So um, I do agree, though, with a lot of things that you brought up. And I think this conversation is a good one to have. And I also mentioned that um, that we, as a board, would probably like to see a little more of the follow-up data curious. and how the data is used. And she agreed, and, and that those type of things are going to be addressed. So my, in my opinion, um, I think, you know, that's what we can watch for. And, and at the moment, I'm comfortable with um, the Gallup staying as is. That's just my opinion. And uh, keep us, you know, maybe a little more informed and updated on things and 
and uh, just show us because there is a lot that we're getting out of it apparently, but maybe we don't see it and we need to know that to justify expenditures like of mm -hmm. this. So I do appreciate having that conversation. And just, I just wanna make sure I'm crystal clear on this. Uh, just about 125,000 of that is actually for the Gallup poll. The rest you said are for products that we're actually using for leadership training and for, so uh, are those actually tied together or is this different products? Well, right now it's all in one contract, um, but they are different products. I mean, you can you can make connections between the, your Gallup, um, the Gallup staff survey and strengths, but they also can be completely separate as well. Okay, that, that was my question. So, um, you know, it might be some of that, if, if people really had concerns, it might be some of that you wouldn't want, some of that you would want, we'd be able to break that apart if in the future we ever yep. wanted to do that. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll, um, I, I just want to say a few things because I know I, I brought it up a few times in, in prior meetings, but I have spent, um, I, I've had some conversations with Dr. Jones and um, on the phone for a long time, and then I also had meetings with Dr. Jones and Ms. Hilton. Um, and I told them, I want you to please convince me that this is, is worth it. And they gave me a folder of all, I have all the schools that are using um, the Gallup data in their plans. Um, while I didn't see uh, much change coming about uh, regarding the staff survey, and I had gotten similar feedback from mm -hmm. teachers saying, we don't see any change coming from it. There are teachers that say they don't even bother to fill it out anymore. Uh, because they felt like there wasn't change coming coming from it. So I reached out, uh, I spoke to several administrators though, because I don't want to base things off of just one school that I'm getting feedback from. Uh, so I spoke to several administrators who said they did find the data helpful in making informed decision about, in decisions about staff engagement. And while I personally don't think it's needed because I can tell a school culture by visiting the schools, the leaders at the schools do like having this quantitative measure and they believe they can be intentional in their planning and finding ways to engage their staff using common vocabulary. So, um, like I said, I asked them to convince me, so we spent a lot of time on this. I looked at these school improvement plans, which they were highlighted for everyone that was using it. I think the big thing is, and I think this addresses what you're saying too, and my concerns is that we are being intentional with the planning. So that, that we shouldn't have large groups of, of teachers at schools telling us that they don't feel that their opinion is valid. Yeah. So if we had more consistency, I think that people who are doing it and doing it well are getting something out of it. Um, but if we could be intentional um, to, to make sure that all of our teachers' voices are being yes. heard. And I think maybe it's a, a matter of revisiting it uh, with the leaders again, because we we've had turnover, we've had different groups, um, that I'm, I'm willing to leave it for now uh, based off of looking at all these plans and all the um, different leaders that I talked to. Yes, and can you can we just have more like, <coughs> so if this goes through, can we just have more follow up? Like not just the one right. workshop, can we just see how these, like I didn't know yes. about those plans, like I would actually like to sit down with you and have that same meeting. Um, so, so I can see, um, because I think that's what the disconnect for me is, is like I, I appreciate your email and I did understand what you're saying, but I just feel like there wasn't, a, there's not a follow through. So I think if we can, like in the future, like that 30%, make sure that that's also being utilized and that teachers' voices are feeling like there's change or being heard and that there's change. Um, because I did too. I, I talked to like four administrators that said they weren't using it and I talked to some math staff members that said, yeah, it's great, you know? So um, there was just inconsistencies. And then me as an educator, I was like, I don't ever remember ever going back to that. So. If that's something that we can do. And so since that's not the majority of that contract, would you also like more information well, about the leadership yes, development Yes, the whole, the whole contract. In, in okay. Because in if you wanted to know more about the leadership development, um, Leah is here. She could talk to that now or we can follow up later. Um, it is part of our state approved leadership mm -hmm. development plan as well. No, I, I think that I'm, I'm willing to let it stay for right now, but I just want to see some continuous follow up and I would like updates on um, you know what how this is helping 
and also like, are we, just a quick question, we're not just pulling teachers and like, schools aren't just pulling teachers one time of year for morale and, and engagement, right? There's gonna be multiple conversations that are gonna be happening throughout the year because I think it's important things change and I know a lot of stuff is out of our control right now, um, but just so that, like I said, their voices are feeling heard. Mm -hmm. We, um, as part of our key priorities guide and our um, multi-tiered systems of support work, we do um, provide some additional survey tools that's, okay. that that um, schools can use related to systems of support. Um, additionally, uh, some now I've forgotten. Everybody talked. Um, okay. uh, someone mentioned there are specific Gallup resources that we have access to through this contract. We would not have those, um, and they do relate to. Um, specific questions that might be an issue or a group of questions that might be an issue at a school. Um, we already do have a um, time on an upcoming principal meeting for this, okay. just um, as an FYI um, for you. And so we can make sure that we are um, providing more information okay. for sure. All right, so um, I move to approve uh, consent you know, item. Oh, did you have? I'm going to try. We're going to let you talk. <coughs> So before I got sick and I was doing school visits, I actually made a point of asking about this to every principal, mm -hmm. and I missed two of them. One of them, my friend in the back row today, I missed when I visited her school, but the rest of them, all but one told me that they were utilizing it for okay. staff stuff, but ironically, three of them said, I sure wish that it was done at a different time. And they all said that they wish it was done in March or April instead of in October. So I will throw that out there. Is I was that in something I that we could Ms. look at? I did ask Dr. Jones about that too, and I have an answer here, because I also got that feedback. Yeah. We did the staff at the same time as the student um, poll was done by Gallup, which was a set window. And we have had some discussions about other time frames. Um, it is interesting when you get several people in a room and you talk about options, and then there's, you don't come up with a better one. Is, my, is what typically happens. So it would be a reason not for March. I mean, we could well, do maybe, it again. Maybe in your meeting have a discussion about yeah, that because they all. Yeah. That was the feedback I got. Yeah, too. they all thought I that in that. March or April. Okay, so I move to approve consent agenda item 12.6. Second. Okay, first Hardy, second Crumley. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank you for the conversation. Motion carries. All right, no problem. Good conversation. All right. I'm going to make this motion. I'm going home. Right. That brings us to the consent agenda, which is uh, 16.1. And uh, Mr. Altman. I would uh, like to move approval for 16.1 in honor of a man that committed himself to that school and that community and deserves it. Second. Okay. First, uh, Altman. Second, Crumley. Any discussions? I think we're all very pleased to do this. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, feel better. Feel better. better. And right. thank you for being here, Dr. Stanley, and for the great yes. presentation of this gentleman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, that brings us to individual uh, board member reports. And Mrs. Crumley. Oh, we're already there. Yes, we are. We are zipping right along. Okay, hang on one second. I don't really have a lot to say tonight except, again, uh, reiterate a welcome back to everyone for the 22-23 school year since this is our first meeting. And uh, I hope it is the best one we've had in a long time. <laughs> and I also want to thank uh, Mrs. Kuhn and your team for responding to all the emails I kept forwarding you, you. on transportation things and your immediate responses usually to the parents. So thank you very much, because I know I sent you a lot. Thank you. All right, uh, Mrs. Uh, Bodwin. Um, I want to thank the Orlando Lakes High School community for their patience. I know the traffic has been an issue. The school leadership team, the transportation department, and the committee that works with the county are all working on this issue. Um, it was also brought to my attention by parents that there, there are some student behavior problems on buses, specifically in my district. I spoke with Mrs. Kuhn and uh, she is working with our assistant superintendents to help mitigate these concerns. Um, I ask that parents please speak with your students about the importance of appropriate behavior while riding the bus. 
It can cause safety concerns in addition to being disrespectful to the drivers and their peers. Um, Superintendent Browning, um, do you know when we're going to get an update on the supports that are put in place to assist our schools that got below a grade of C? Got really quiet uh, in next, the air uh, the 12th. Oh, we're going to discuss that. We have a, during the district update, I believe, that okay, we're going to We're going to talk about that. that. Okay, I just want to follow up on that. Thank you. Um, I participated in another meeting for the five-year review of Land Lakes High School's International Baccalaureate Program. We discussed the teacher support standard and the culture standard. Teachers shared that they have adequate resources, including books, access to online resources, and access to training and professional development. Some teachers missed the face-to-face -face trainings where they had the opportunity to interact and exchange ideas with IB teachers from around the world. The school is trying to find meeting times for IB teachers to collaborate at the school level. It's a challenge with all the other meetings that the, the teachers have to attend. Regarding the culture, the school is planning to do more with Gator of the Month and making connections with the IB learner profiles. The students who come to Land Lakes High School from the Pineview Elementary and the Pineview Middle School feeder pattern are familiar with the learner profiles and can make those connections, but not all students come from the feeder pattern, so it's good that they're going to start being more inclusive of all the students. Um, I also attended Sun Lake High School opening game and the first meeting uh, football game that was, and the first meeting of the Citizens Academy. Thank you to all the community members who are so giving of their time to participate in this. Met with Land, uh, Dade City Rotary and Habitat for Humanity, and I shared the contact information for the Habitat for Humanity group with Mr. Gad. Uh, I've been communicating with a community, me community member about an animal-assisted literacy program. A parent volunteered to coordinate it and connect with interested schools uh, to the groups that do this, and I sent the contact information to Mrs. Hilton. And this kind of goes back to what you were just talking about earlier. Um, I'm really not sure who the contact is for the community engagement. So I forwarded it to you because I know you've been spearheading this, but like you said, this landing page is going to be really important because when people are reaching out and they want to help, we, we need to know, and I know Mrs. Armstrong, we've all mentioned it before, who to send them to. Um, so I did send that to Ms. Hilton. Um, working on it, huh? And I want to ask, I did uh, talk to Ms. Hilton <laughs> briefly about this when we were meeting about the Gallup um, questions that I had. Um, asked staff to consider um, some clarifications on the website about the Parents' Bill of Rights because it's titled the Parents' Bill of Rights, but it also, maybe we could change it to something that better describes the, co the consents that, that are there because they include forms in addition to those that are added to comply with the Parent Bill of Rights. I spoke to a parent about it and I did share that information, but many of the consents that are there, like we all know, um, have been available for some time. They were in paper form for many years. The electronic versions are now all in one place to make it easier for parents, which is a, a really good thing. I'm glad that staff organized it, but I thought maybe we would want to look, look at changing the title of the page to something so people know it's more uh, than just parent bill of rights. Maybe parent bill of rights and other consent forms or something like that so it's more clear. Um, that was it for that one. Um, I want to thank our community for supporting the referendum for teacher, bus driver, cafeteria maintenance, instructional assistance, and all non-administrator support staff. Next year, the pay supplements will help us recruit and retain the best teachers for our students. Our students deserve to have high quality certified teachers in front of them. This referendum, in addition to our commitment to permanent salary increases, will go a long way toward Pasco County Schools employees being the best paid district in the area. The additional income will be significant for our employees, but I must also say that knowing that the majority of the community supports public education and our educators and staff is a big morale boost to our team. I know that this was a big ask for our community in difficult economic times, and I appreciate our voters supporting our schools, so thank you. I also want to express my sincere gratitude to the Lift Up Pasco volunteers and all of our staff who worked outside of their contracted hours to help with this important initiative. This is a big win for Pasco students. Thank you. Mrs. Harding? Yes. Um, I 
got an opportunity to visit all of my schools in District 5 the first few days of school. I wanted our teachers and staff to know that I'm there to support them. There were so much smiles and learning going on since day one. A huge shout out to our teachers and staff who continuously show up every single day for our students. You're so appreciated and I look forward to visiting more schools in the coming weeks. I too just wanted to take a moment to thank our community. On August 23rd, you voted yes for our Pasco County students because you believe in public education. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting our teachers and staff through our referendum. I truly believe that this is gonna help us retain our teacher staff and recruit new teachers and staff and to help us be competitive to our surrounding counties. Like Ms. Bodwin mentioned, our students deserve to have certified teachers in front of them teaching them. Our teachers and staff deserve to be compensated appropriately for all their hard work and they do every single day. Good schools are created when you have certified teachers teaching our amazing students, and when you have good schools, communities thrive. Thank you to the Lift Up Pasco, um, to all of our staff, to USEP, and all of um, that were a part of that. I also want to give a really big thank you to Ms. Bodwin. She worked really, 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 really hard on that. So thank you, Ms. Bodwin, for all your support. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to our community from the bottom of my heart. Mr. Um, Browning, I want to thank you for giving that update on busing. Um, but I'm still waiting on occupancy numbers. I know that we have a list somewhere that states who is on each bus and how many students we have on each bus because we give students bus passes. I'd like to know what constitutes a full bus and how many seats are empty. I truly understand that we're in a crisis. I really, really do. Um, and I want to thank Ms. Um, Ms. Kuhn for the same thing, emailing parents back, answering all of my questions. I do have families reaching out to me still daily about their children waiting for an hour at their bus stop because the bus is late, and I appreciate you guys looking into all those situations, so thank you. Um, I've also been getting a lot of um, emails about the lack of communication about where their children are if a bus is late, and I brought that to your attention, so thank you again for addressing that. Um, but we also have children, again, who are still walking over some an hour to school in the dark with no sidewalks and no lighting. Um, I have um, personally written to our BOCC. I don't know if that's something that we would like to do again as a board. I know that the safety team um, has like a whole list of things. I know that all the things that I've brought up, Mrs. Kuhn has added on that list. Um, but I feel that they're dragging their feet and it's a huge safety issue. So I was wondering if um, you guys I would think be we willing should do. I think we should to write a letter. Do. Yeah. I think um, I'm, I'm happy to urgency. show up there, honestly, and speak I've, to you because I made a call to them recently and I'm interrupting you. No, no, I yeah. the same thing. I've actually wanted to show up to a meeting as well. So um, I appreciate, I'm so grateful for their efforts of wanting to put them in the sidewalks. I know that they mentioned that, but we got we got to move, got to move along. So I'm just wondering if we would be willing to write a letter stating the urgency of it. <laughs> and I think Mrs. Kuhn, or Mr. Gadd, you would probably have something. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I think in the coming, I can't say it's going to happen overnight, but I think yeah. in the coming months, we're going to have some commission members who are going to take up the charge for us on sidewalks. Okay. I've had conversations with some people currently on the commission and some that will soon be on the commission, and um, I think they're sympathetic towards our cause. I think um, Ms. Kuhn shared with you that book prior to Dan Biles leaving, I had talked to him about the sidewalk issue, and he asked us to prioritize the top 10, not that the others aren't important, um, but we did send a top 10 list over. I think okay. uh, Ms. Kuhn CC'd that to you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm having, I, I, don't, I still think you should write a letter. I'm not discouraging you from writing a letter because yeah. <laughs> I think that's, first of all, your prerogative and also your responsibility as school board members. Um, but he's I think also leaving, so yeah, I, we have to make sure it happens. Yeah, I, I think, well, he's gone. Uh, there's a new guy, Mike Carballa. Uh, he's aware of the situation, but um, I can assure you that a couple of incoming commissioners are well aware of it and uh, I think are going to be supportive of our cause. Well, if my peers are good with that, I'm willing to drop the letter and get that would be great. I will help and you with that. Sign it. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but I do still want occupancy numbers, I really do, um, because my belief, if there are empty seats, you talk about equity and you talk about fairness, it's not fair if we have empty seats on a bus and we have kids that are walking an hour in the dark to school. Um, and so I would like some sort of account for how many kids. We make our, our decisions based on data, and so I think I have the right to have some of that data. Um, I, I, like I said, I want to thank um, everything transportation is doing to ensure that our students are arriving to school safely and thank you for addressing any of those concerns, especially with communication with parents because I do, truly do know that this is a stressful time and a lot of it is out of our control and we're doing the best that we can, but I, 
would like I would still like to see some data. <clears throat> and then um, one other thing that I've really been frustrated about is communication. There have been multiple things that have been occurring that I'm finding out last. Um, and I'm sure if I'm finding out last, my peers are probably finding out last. Um, if I'm finding out last, how am I supposed to answer questions, engage with our community, and share the wonderful things that are happening with our school district? Um, it isn't just board members who are being kept in the a loop. I'm hearing much from our parents and our community, and I'm so grateful I got that email today about um, that portal that's happening with the grades and stuff. So that's, that's a good start. Um, I've mentioned this before, but I really think that we need to get better at this. It's really frustrating when you're finding out from the news what is occurring in our schools. Um, communication is what's going to help squash misinformation and myth truths that are being spread, um, as well as ease the minds of our teachers who are in the trenches every single day and they're seeing some of this stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'm still getting a lot of calls about the no new tolerance behavior plan for elementary schools. I think that there's not a lot of clear expectations on what that looks like. Um, and when I'm asked that, I, I don't really know what it looks like in elementary, so I'm not sure if that's something we can communicate to our teachers as well. They don't understand what that looks like. Um, and that how the district has their back. Um, and so I honestly can't blame them for that frustration. So I just wanted to put that out there again. If we could work on that and make sure that board members are in the loop of what's going on, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right. All right. Um, first, uh, they've said it all, but I also want to say I'm so thankful for the community for voting yes for our students and for all the support that we had on that issue. So that was just a, a big win for our district. Um, the, the, the busing, um, you know, I've seen some improvements at some schools as far as the traffic on the courtesy busing. Um, you know, I know it's an issue, especially with the safety, and I agree we need to, to work on getting more of those sidewalks in. And uh, I think a lot of people are not aware that the safety guards, the crossing guards are supplied by the the, dep the sheriff's department and the city and police, and they're having a horrible time finding uh, crossing guards. Uh, I've seen flyers in restaurants from yeah. the sheriff's department uh, looking for, for hiring crossing guards. I've seen deputies uh, acting as crossing guards uh, because they, they are short. Uh, so that's something if we can help the sheriff's department get more crossing guards, that would be uh, a, a big help because we could put them in more places. Uh, in, in the past, I've asked about empty buses uh, seats, you know, because when a school bus pulls up, it doesn't look like there's a lot of empty seats. And um, I, I found that there's a lot of parents that say, well, my kid, I can take my kid almost every day, but there's some days I might not be able to take my kid, so I want to reserve a seat on the bus for them. So that seat gets unused except for very few uh, times during the year. Uh, I know we put out a request when we had the problem with the transportation that if parents would be willing to, to give up that seat because they do have a, a right to that seat if they live outside of the two mile area and a lot of the parents sign up for it but then they don't utilize it uh, with their kids because they end up driving them. But I would like to say I, I'm kind of old school. I remember carpooling to school you know, uh, there was a, a car full of us kids uh, in the neighborhood that we carpooled and the, every parent drove once during the week. So that instead of five cars being on the uh, road, it was only one car being on the road. So I think um, in this day and age, I know we used there used to be a program that would actually try to match up parents, but I would think with the social media that that uh, we could maybe encourage, try to encourage carpooling uh, again um, to see if that might help some of the, the problems that we are having. Um, so that, that might be something else that, that might help. Because this is a community problem and we, we can only do so much as far as hiring the bus drivers. We, we really need the community to come together and help us with these solutions. Um, to, to solve some of these issues. Um, all right, on to good things. Madam Question. Chair, I forgot something. Yes. I we learned at dinner that Kathy Hunsinger is leaving, and this is your last board, board meeting tonight. So I think just as a board, we want to say, yeah, we'll yes. miss you a lot, and thank you thank for you. Thank all, you. a year, almost a year, right? Yeah. yeah she didn't you. make it a year, did she? 
It's Mr. Gad. On the, I'm just on telling the, you, it's Mr. Gad. But, 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 I don't know who <laughs> ran you off, but I, we, we're kidding. But, but, we but, just but, wish you the best in your yes. next endeavor, and we just want to acknowledge. Thank you so much yes. for all you've done for us and all Thank the support. You. Thank, yep. you. Thank you. And we yep. wish you the best. Yeah, we, we do wish you the best. Um, I, I had the pleasure of, of going to opening game for Mitchell uh, High School home game. Uh, and there's this gentleman sitting on the sideline, the biggest cheers for the, the football team. I mean, he was a standout as far as cheering for their students. And, and then I got to talking to some of the assistant principals and ESC teachers and said, oh, he's wonderful, he's wonderful. It turns out he is one of our uh, discipline uh, instructional assistants. I won't say IAs because people don't know what all these letters mean. Uh, but he is also a youth pastor, and he felt it was his calling to work with our high school kids. And let me tell you, in just the short time that school's been open, what a difference uh, the staff and the assistant principals and principal says that he has made. He's made the connection with the students, the worst offenders. He's made connections with them. He's, he's made connections with their parents, uh, and he's already turning students around because of these connections that he's making, personal connections he's making with these kids. So I, I just wanted to give a shout out to, to him for all the one can, all the change that has come about just from his one efforts. So it's just it was just amazing to see and it just made you want to smile. And so I want to end that on a good note there. And turn it over to Madam, Madam Chair, if you could, before we go to the attorney, I just want to address a couple points that Mrs. Harding had made. Um, as far as bus occupancy go, I've, I've, I've said this before, we do not have occupancy numbers on our buses. But how do you know? We do not. We, what, we, what we do have is we have rosters of the kids that are entitled to ride that bus. We do not have bus driver. We, first off, we don't have an automated system that – that scans kids when they come in and records who's actually on the bus. But the bus driver doesn't the, know how many are on each bus? Um, we do not. The bus driver does not keep a running record of the numbers of kids on that bus. That's the reason you have administrators and teachers out at the bus loops getting the right kids on the right buses. And it's the driver's responsibility to get those kids to the appropriate stops. So our system does not track the numbers of kids that actually ride those buses. We have rosters. We have numbers of kids that are rostered. That are assigned. That are assigned, uh, to kind of go to Mrs. Uh, Armstrong's point, the number of kids that are rostered to be on that bus. I will tell you, with, with the few drivers that I have, um, and, and again, we've gone from 436 routes down to 333 routes. We've gone to four bell tiers. Uh, we've done away with courtesy riders. Uh, I, I do not want to add something else to the plate of bus drivers that they've, that they've got to count the numbers of kids uh, on their buses. Um, so certainly, depending on where the bus is in their route, you can probably see a bus, and it may appear that it has bus seats that are open. The problem with that is you don't know where they are in their route because many of those seats are going to be filled up with kids before they get to school or before they get to their last stop. So bus occupancy numbers are something that we cannot provide at this point. As far as the disciplinary uh, issues in elementary, uh, that is a sticky wicket. And the reason I say that is, is because quite honestly, when you have elementary school students that are committing level two offenses, uh, quite honestly, and I'll just be candid there is no place to put level two or uh, elementary kids you you it's it's not like uh east pasco education academy or west pasco education academy uh as we affectionately call those alternative schools where you have a place to put uh, uh secondary kids middles and highs the problem with it is is that when you have the high number of elementary students that are committing level two and i will add level three offenses uh it, it is there. There is there's no solution, uh, even moving them to an alternative placement. Uh, our Pasco E School is not set up to handle elementaries. 
what we found when we were in COVID and we all went to virtual is that was kind of a, a one and done system uh, where everybody had to have a virtual platform to be educated on. We do not have that platform. We, we don't support that platform. Uh, but I just want to make sure that, that, you, that the board knew uh, that yes, we see level two level twos and one level one or level three offense, and you're going to be placed for expulsion. That primarily uh, applies to secondary kids. I wish we had a place, and I will tell you, we continue uh, as a as a staff to work on uh, the discipline issue and how we address elementary kids. I, <laughs> I, I will say this until I walk out the door, and that is that parents have uh, a responsibility uh, to have discussions with their kids about what appropriate behavior is in schools. And we've got to partner with them. They've got to set those expectations at home so that they know when they come into school what those expectations look like and what they need to do uh, in a civilized society, and that is behave. Keep your hands off of one another. Quit calling each other names. Quit, quit just being kids, uh, violently, violently being kids. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. I get the popping and the hitting and the, the, the pushing and the kicking. I get that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking where, where you have kids that are literally beating kids to the ground, uh, bloodying them up, and causing them to have to go to the hospital because of the injuries they've caused. That's the level twos and level threes I'm talking about. Um, and that's inappropriate behavior. So I just, we're still working on the discipline stuff. Uh, I think that we've, we have a plan for the secondary, but it's the elementaries that's, that's, uh, that's harder. Uh, uh, elementary students, they can or cannot be suspended? They, they can, can be. be. They can. Yeah, they, they certainly can be. can be suspended. However, I will, I will tell you, uh, although my stance has been pretty firm, and that is one level three or two level twos, and we're going to put you up for expulsion, keep in mind that between me and, and that principal, there's a hearing officer. Um, and they're going to look at the facts, they're going to look at videos, they're going to make the judgment call, and they're going to make the recommendation to the superintendent. Uh, but, but even under that scenario, the last thing I want to do is expel kids from school. The, it, it doesn't serve no, no, kids. No, I, I didn't say expel, I said suspension. You, you can, but that gets you 10 days. Yeah. That gets you 10 days. And I guarantee you 10 days is not enough time to... Uh, change the behavior of kids. Uh, it just isn't. It, it just isn't. As a matter of fact, I would even go as far as to say that a year of expulsion is not enough time to change the behavior of kids. I think it starts before we get those kids in our system. Moms and dads have got to have conversations with their kids about what appropriate behavior is. The, the issue is we end up having kids come into our system, and I'm not talking about a lot of them. I'm talking about a small number of kids, and I've said this publicly, that will disrupt and and create uh, uh, chaos uh, either in a classroom or across an entire school campus. Uh, and that's the reason I came out pretty strong about the expulsion uh, recommendation for one level three last year. So we continue to work on that. Uh, is it perfect? No, it's not. Because I don't want to expel kids, but I also want to make sure the other 24 or 26, exactly. 28 kids in the classroom that aren't fighting have an opportunity to get an education. That's exactly. what I want, and that's what I think we as a school district have the responsibility to ensure is that those kids that want to be in school, that want to learn, have that opportunity. May I make a comment now? Okay. So first off, I never once asked for school bus drivers to take attendance. I just think that we need to have some, we have some sort of record of the kids that are on a bus because if heaven forbid an emergency happens on our bus, the Bus drivers are the ones in charge of those children. So maybe I need the rosters, and I want to know what constitutes a full bus. Second, in regards to um, the behavior in elementary, um, I brought forth a situation where a teacher was bit, and there's still nothing going on. And I, I've been following up, and I know that they're working on it. But those are situations where our teachers feel that they're not being supported. Um, and I have been in classrooms where there's chaos going on, not because of any fault of the teacher, but because there's a few students who aren't making good choices and they are being level two, and the teacher isn't feeling any of that support. So what I'm asking is, and I don't think this was being communicated right, because I think when we had, when you had mentioned the level twos, I remember Ms. Um, Armstrong and I asking specifically if it relates to elementary schools, and you said yes. So I think that the communication to our teachers and to our staff needs to go out, and I appreciate the fact that you're looking at that and trying to figure out you know, solutions for that, but 
I think that there's like a disconnect there because I think that a lot of our teachers and staff are like, well, what, what, what does that mean? Because there are, there, 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 the learning is being impeded by other students. And so we do at some point need to make sure that um, there are consequences um, for that. So I do appreciate the fact that you are continuously looking at that because our elementary school teachers need that support just as much as our secondary teachers. And I would agree with you, Madam Chairman. I would agree. Uh, the one particular case that you're referring to, I have inserted myself in at Hudson Primary Academy myself. Okay. I have spoken to the principal. Uh, I don't buy the premise that the teacher should not feel supported. Uh, when the superintendent gets involved with something, I think that should send a pretty long, strong I'm message. I'm not saying her. I'm saying understand but but I'm not dealing with I'm dealing with these situations by situations by situations we have communicated to teachers and and what I have communicated to teachers is that we continue to work on the discipline issues in this district they are out of control not just in this district but across the state of Florida and quite honestly across the United States mm -hmm. and and all I'm concerned about is trying to keep the ship of the Pasco district afloat uh, I want to provide that opportunity for kids that want to be there to be there and get that education. Ms. Harding, you have my word, you have my assurance that we will continue to work Thank on you. the discipline issues, uh, not only for the secondary, but the, the slippery piece of that is those elementary kids because we do not have an option. If we did, I would, I would tomorrow put each one of those kids that commit those two level twos in elementary school where we find most of those offenses being created or, or occurring into an alternatively placed setting. Get them out of the school, let mom and dad be responsible for them in that virtual environment. But at this point, I just don't, we just don't have that as a district. And it's the bus too, mm -hmm. the behaviors oh, on the bus. Oh, absolutely is. That, that our poor drivers are dealing with. It is, yeah. it is. You're absolutely right, Mrs. Bowman. The, the buses, the buses, I would say, are, are probably just as treacherous uh, as some of our classrooms based on one or two kids. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm getting here. Thank you. A lot. I yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't have anything. You don't have anything. All right. Thank you. Um, then we will call the business portion.